All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to NAB 2018. You're all excited to be here, right? Yes? Outstanding. All right, I'm Peter Crithry. I'm marketing manager for our motion picture cameras, Sydney Alta, F555, and of course, the, the new Venice, the full frame motion picture camera that we just introduced in February. Have you guys all heard about the Venice? Yes? Outstanding. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Venice here this morning or this afternoon, and then I'm going to bring on a very special guest, an, a, an ASC cinematographer who's currently shooting with the camera, and he's going to talk about his experiences, his history, and what he's doing with the, the camera on the new project that he's working on. So I want to give you all a quick background of the camera, and then we'll go from there. So what is Venice? Well, it's Sony's uh, new adventure into full frame motion picture camera technology. Uh, what we did is a couple of years ago, we started going back out into the field again and talking to cinematographers, filmmakers, producers, directors, uh, DITs and so forth. What do they need as their next generation motion picture camera system? What does it need to be? Uh, you know, the sensor, anamorphic, full frame, super 35, aspect ratios, dynamic range, the color science, the tonal tonality, the film look, the menu system, the workflow, and so forth. All of these key characteristics had to be carefully considered. And so over a period of time, after a lot of very significant feedback, we arrived at the Venice camera system. So some key pe uh, features that we needed to really focus on, build quality, ergonomics, sensor performance, uh, image quality with respect to color science, skin tone rendition, highlight roll off, and of course, the all important dynamic range. A very simple and intuitive camera to use. The menu system had to be completely redone from scratch. Uh, very simple, very elegant workflow. Uh, the camera formats previously supported, already existing. No need to reinvent the workflow in that area uh, at all either. And of course, the menu system, the terminology and the flow and the ease of use of the camera. So all of these were carefully considered. And that's what we arrived at with the Venice. So one of its big claim to fame is, of course, the image sensor. Uh, ground up development effort specifically designed for Venice is the full frame motion picture sensor. It comes out at, uh, you, as you can see here, uh, 36 by 24. So full height 24 millimeter sensor. What is the advantage of full frame? Well, we can be aspect ratio agnostic. We can derive super 35, 17.9 and 16.9 in 4K. We can do true anamorphic, uh, all the way out to 6.5 anamorphic, as well as 4.3 anamorphic. Uh, with those beautiful lenses. And of course, we can go all the way out to full frame, full height, 24 millimeter, 6K resolution. So one of the key components of developing this sensor was what, what was the focus? What did we need to do? Do we need to keep pushing uh, photo sites, resolution higher and higher? Or do we strike a compromise and focus more on dynamic range performance than resolution? What does that mean? Well. This sensor tops out at 6K. The reason for that is very simple. When you design an image sensor, you have a limited amount of uh, surface area that you can work with. The photo sites can either be smaller, as you can see here, they can either be smaller for more resolution, or you can have larger photo sites for less resolution, meaning uh, 6K or, or lower. The trade-off, the physics of image sensor development is uh, something has to give. The larger the photo sites, the more dynamic range you're gonna get out of the camera. The smaller the photo sites, the less dynamic range, but you can have higher resolution. So what's the answer? Well, you want the, high, the, the greatest amount of dynamic range possible, but uh, resulting in a very pleasing, very beautiful image, and that's what we arrived at here with the Venice coming in at 6K with the sensor. So when we talk about sensitivity, uh, exposure index, ASA, ISO, uh, this, the sensor uh, is at its optimal at 500. Uh, but you can push it much, much further, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, all the way out to 10,000 uh, ISO, actually. But at 500, we can reach uh, six stops above and nine stops under, giving us over 15 stops of measured dynamic range. And this has been tested and confirmed by a lot of cinematographers that have uh, tested and used the camera so far in the market. But what we're showing here at NAB is a technology preview, what we call dual-based ISO sensitivity where we can implement 2500 ISO but have the same dynamic range performance as if you're at 500 ISO. So you can still be six stops above and nine stops under, still achieve over 15 stops of dynamic range be it, but be at 2500 ISO, meaning you can get, get a lot more shadow detail, a lot more information in the dark areas of the image and of course still maintaining highlight detail 
and with that massive amount of dynamic range. And so we're showing that feature here at NAB, and you'll also see some of that footage uh, rolling here on, on this massively beautiful CLED display. So you can see that we can go all the way up to 10,000 ISO in this mode. This is a different signal processing mode to the normal uh, ISO of 500. So another big wow factor of the camera is it's the world's only uh, cinema camera that has eight built-in NDs directly in the image sensor block of the camera. You can see that we can go from clear all the way up to 2.4 with two ro rotary turrets that are built directly into the image sensor. This is completely sealed in the Venice. Uh, th there's no light contamination, no dust, uh, no other types of uh, negative impact by having filters external to the camera. And this is servo controllable, and so you can operate that either on the camera or off the camera. And so the huge advantage here that you save is time, because you can be leveraging the neutral density filters uh, for all different types of lighting conditions uh, instantly, just by pressing the button or in is issuing the command to the camera, and it immediately changes uh, the neutral density value. So this was a huge engineering accomplishment that our engineers were able to achieve with the Venice, and it's certainly one of the big wow factors of the camera. Another huge advantage is it is a user removable sensor block. So with four screws on the front, two screws underneath, just takes you under a minute, you can physically remove the image sensor block. A uh, number of reasons why you may want to do that, uh, but one of the key features here is that it's future proof. As we develop different sensor strategies, potentially we can have removable sensor blocks for the Venice. So that's a huge advantage. The ND filters are built directly into the front element of the sensor block, and it's completely sealed, as I mentioned earlier. So another huge advantage is the simultaneous recording. You can achieve 6K onboard recording, 4K onboard recording. Uh, you can also record to our XOCN, the 16-bit extended tonal range original camera negative. This is a very powerful uh, acquisition format that we developed that shrinks the file sizes down considerably even from uh, the raw recording. It's visually lossless, it's an elegant type of compression, and it's at 16-bit performance. Then we also have the Sony RAW, which is also at 16-bit. We support XAVC, which is our highest quality H.264 uh, implementation of the codec in 10-bit 422. And we support two flavors of that, 300 megabits per second in 30p and 480 megabits per second in 30p. We also will be supporting Apple ProRes in HD as a future firmware update. And the combinations of the recording formats, as you can see in the picture, we have the R7 RAW recorder, XOCN recorder on the back, and supporting with the AXS cards. And we have the internal S by S card slots for the simultaneous recording modes that you can take advantage of. And all of these recording formats are fully supported uh, in all of the third-party workflow tools that you would commonly use uh, out there. So what's been happening with Venice since it's been released? Uh, and again, as I mentioned, it was only two months ago in February that we released it. It's already been really well received. It's on a number of feature films, television commercials, documentaries, uh, and, and a huge range of uh, you know, productions, music videos as well. Uh, some screenshots here that you can see from a music video we're going to show tomorrow here on stage and some of the Venice in Venice uh, behind the scenes pictures that you've been seeing footage here on the CLED. But there's a lot more production activity happening with Venice and there's going to be some you know, really cool announcements in the near future about some very big feature film titles that are going to be using the camera. Another point we wanted to make here is that at the very high end of cinema camera development, these are handmade in our factory in Japan. They are actually put together by hand. And you can see here some of the pictures that we were able to show you from our factory in Kosai, where our engineers painstakingly put together uh, these cameras. And so there's a lot of care and attention to detail that goes into high-end camera development. Uh, that really is a contrast but between the high end and the, the lower tiers. So these are some great pictures here to show you just how much care and attention goes into the manufacturing of the motion picture camera. And of course Netflix uh, has fully approved Venice for all productions in 6K, 4K and anamorphic Super 35 modes. So regardless of the operating condition of the camera, uh, Netflix fully supports it. Really quickly here, uh, we announced this yesterday uh, in our press conference here at NAB uh, with one of our friends, our partners, Teradek. As many of you know, Teradek has the Bolt series where they have wireless video transmission on set. Uh, it's kind of pretty much the de facto standard out there for on-set wireless. 
transmission, uh, we've co-developed a module, a transmitter that'll dock directly to the Venice, where you don't need power cables, you don't need video cables. It communicates directly with the Venice and is directly integrated uh, in, in, in those respects. We can put the raw recorder on the back, so it will pass the signal through. And the advantage here is that there are no cables needed. It'll work directly on the body of the camera. OK, so having said all that, I'd like to welcome a special guest up on stage. Please welcome Sydney Seidel, ASC, cinematographer, uh, who's currently using the Venice for a project. And we're going to talk about Sid's experiences as a cinematographer and using the camera. But Sid, if you could just give some background where you came from, how you got here, and we'll go from there. Sure, of course. Um, I've been in the camera department for about 37 years. Started in a loading room at Fox, worked my way up, and I've been a DP for about 20 years now. Um, shooting independent features, commercials, television shows. Most of my work predominantly in the last five to eight years has been television, uh, episodic, and pilots. Okay, great. So. You've used a number of cameras in the past. You've seen the technology at the high end change gradually over the years. Can you give us some contrasting examples of, of, of what you've seen, what you've used, and how they differentiate, and how they've grown over the years? Uh, obviously a huge change. I mean, starting in film and, and working in film with all different film cameras for many, many years was a bit of an adjustment when digital came about. Um, I think a lot of filmmakers will agree that when digital first came out, we were not all that happy with it compared to the, what we were used to doing with film. Uh, but when digital did come out, there were certain mandates that were given. We had to work our way from film into digital. Uh, and fortunately, as we've sort of progressed in our, in our knowledge of digital, digital has grown with us to the point that it is now that I can basically take a digital camera, specifically this Venice that I just used, and pretty much get the exact look I was looking for and would have gotten had I shot film, in my opinion. So when you were shooting film, you had very specific image characteristics that appealed to you. Can you talk about those characteristics and how they transferred over to digital? So in other words, what, what do you look for when you test a camera, knowing, knowing the response of film, skin tone, dynamic range, colorimetry? When you test the digital cameras, what are you looking for specifically? Um, I would say, first off, I'm not a, a, a super technical director of photography. Um, coming up and working the way I did, most of, of what I learned, most of my aesthetic is visceral. It's, it's very much what I see, what I feel, what I can respond to. Um, whereas sometimes the, the technical aspects, it would say to me, well, this particular film stock has eight stops of latitude in the high end and four stops in the low end, or digital would say nine stops in the high end and five or six in the low end. It really, for me, boils down to what I see with my eye and what I feel in terms of the image, in terms of color rendition, in terms of exposure. Do I look for some highs that fall off too far for me? Do I look for highs that can be held down a little bit? Same in the, in the, in the bottom end, in the toe end. Does the shadows get a little murky? Is it a little noisy? Really for me, testing has to do with colors, color combinations, and where my latitude falls. How much can I kind of twist, bend, and manipulate the image? Okay, so then you arrived at uh, the recent project and then the camera testing for that project. Could you talk a little bit about the project and then lead into the camera testing and then how you arrived at the Venice? Well, the interesting thing, um, the, the latest pilot project I just finished was a pilot called Chiefs for CBS that Sony produced. Um, when you work with Sony, Sony prefers you use their cameras. They obviously let you have your own, but I've used the F55 quite successfully for a lot of projects. I found the Venice camera when I was at Keslow Camera one day um, and was completely intrigued by it uh, to the point that I said I want to use it on my next project. I already know what the F55 will do. I want to know what the Venice will do. I did not have an opportunity to test it. Uh, at the time, Keslow had one. Greg Frazier was using it. But Keslow said, hey, by the way, I've got 10 coming next week if you're interested. Again, not having the ability to test it but understanding what the F55 would do, I thought I'll take it. It's, not to be disrespectful, it's not going to be worse. I know it's going to be at least everything I'm used to with the F55 and hopefully more. So I actually took it out without testing it. My testing was basically going to be shooting. Okay. That's a little unusual, right? Because normally and you... <laughs> trust me, it's very unusual. But I also knew that with the pilot I was doing, there were certain scenes that I had latitude to play with, whether I wanted to play around a little more with color or not, to the point that even... 
if it didn't quite do what I wanted, I knew that the image would be satisfactory and I knew that I could manipulate it later if it didn't turn out. It turns out that the Venice exceeded my expectations everywhere. Uh, it exceeded it in, in, in color rendition. It exceeded it in the exposure latitude. Uh, I was really pleased in terms of the noise factor. Um, it, it, for me, it was a home run and a pleasant surprise. So the, the, the form factor, the usability, the design, the style, I, I'm sure you notice that it's a complete departure from the previous cameras. Oh, 100%, yes. And, and Keslo had the opportunity to work enough with it to build enough accessories for me, for my assistants, because as you know, as a cinematographer, the assistants need to be happy. Because if they can't put parts together, if they can't make changes they need to make, the camera doesn't work itself out. So ergonomically, physically, it was fantastic to use. Uh, I had no problems with it in terms of weather issues. I shot in Atlanta. I had extreme heat. I had humidity. I had rain. Um, no dust, but we had a lot of weather changes. Um, I had a lot of changes in terms of, of daylight, fog, clouds, things like that. Um, but m mostly just from a physical aspect, the camera is super easy to use. The, the, the menus on it, the changes I wanted to make, uh, everything could happen on the fly without a whole big deal and not a lot of scratching of heads. And the, you, you mentioned earlier off stage that you, you changed different exposure indexes. You went down to 200, you're 500, you're 800. You, I think you even went higher. Yes. Talk about lighting, talk about the, the shadow detail, why that's important, highlight roll off and so forth, and, and what you found with how the camera reacted to those different settings. Uh, again, having not being super technical, and, I, and I'm sure there's many people here that could explain to you latitude, top and bottom, and, and high end and noise, and, and noise in the shadows. Um, I like to shoot, again, by eye. I also like to manipulate the ASAs, because I'm an old school guy from film. So even though a lot of people may take a camera at 500 ASA and shoot it always at 500 ASA, I'll take it and I shoot my day exteriors at 200 ASA. I like it because I like to take that scale that everybody talks about, and I like to sort of slide it a little bit for me in terms of where the fall off happens and where the shadows can get lifted up. So day exterior, I shoot at 200 ASA. All my interiors in this camera, I shot at 500 ASA. My night exteriors, I shot at 800 ASA. I did a brief test in a parking lot before I shot, looking at it at 1200 and at 1600. I was also very pleased. I didn't not shoot 1600 because I didn't like it. I just felt that the 800 still gave me so much latitude that I didn't need to go to the 1600 or the 1200. Um, I use NDs outside a lot. I change those a lot. The, eights, the eight NDs that are in this camera are phenomenal because I always felt that internal NDs were limiting. This way, I can sort of make changes on the fly. I can do whatever I need to do with that. All right, so that, that was a big time saver, It I was guess, huge, well? yeah. OK. All right, great. Uh, we're almost out of time. Any questions for Sid? By the way, while we're, st we're here, any questions for Sydney? We good? Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, Sydney. Really thank appreciate you. it. Thanks. And a big shout out to Keslo Camera as well for supporting his shoot. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate it. Thank you.